you are in. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. When you have a shot, I'm team Jesus all the way. I'm team Jesus. I'm team Jesus all the way. That's it. That settles it for me. The word of God reads, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Rest yourselves in the presence of God. Thank you, Father, for sending the word. Thank you for sending the word with power, wisdom, and clarity. Thank you for Dr. Darren leading us in worship on today, God. Yes. Thank you for reminding you that we're not going to have so bad. We're seeing Jesus all the way. Now, Lord, as your word goes forth, we thank you that it will not return into you void, but it will go forth and accomplish that which you please and prosper the thing unto you send it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Somebody shout, I want to live. Shout this, I want to live in the richest place in the world. I want to talk to you today about the richest place in the world. That's the title of my message, the richest place in the world. Anybody, you really mean it. I know you repeated it after me, but do you really mean it? You want to live in the richest place in the world. All right, so let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The word of God reads again, therefore, if any man be in Christ, somebody shout in Christ, he is a new creature. The Bible says all things are passed away in what? All things. Uh-huh. Come on, y'all learn to talk back. And behold, what? All things are become new. So all things, if you're in Christ, that means you've accepted Jesus as your Savior. You're in Christ. How many of you are in Christ? Christ in you. All right. So all things, your old life has passed away. And the scriptures declare what? All things are become new. Hold your place there. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to show you something. Romans chapter 10. The richest place in the world. That's what I want to talk to you about. Living in the richest place in the world. Romans 10, verse 9. When you have a shot, I'm blessed and highly favored by God. I'm blessed and highly favored by God. All right, that's enough blessed people right there. Romans 10 and 9. Let's look at verses 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the richest place in the world, write this down, the richest place in the world is to be in the will of God for your life. The richest place, I ask y'all how many of you want to live in the richest place? Well, the richest place in the world is to be in the will of God for your life. We can see it uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he lives in our heart, which means, as the scripture says, Christ lives in us. How many of you, Christ lives in you? We're going to talk about this. Because sometimes this is in us that Christ is supposed to be living in. We have to check, is it Christ or is it you? So when we accept Jesus as our Savior, I want to go back in this season of our ministry into some foundational teachings that we as seasoned ministers, as seasoned Christians, we come away from because we take for granted that everybody knows or everybody remembers. So y'all don't mind if I just kind of keep it on a level where even Christian and almost two can understand it. That way we can truly understand our salvation package. What it means to be a Christian. We're living in a day and time where, as you all probably can see from social media, there's so much that's going on. And we're seeing a lot of our Christian leaders and people in the church really fall away from church. They're in buildings that we call church, but we really don't see the Christ-like nature operating through us. I think we have come away from, you know, the word of God because in us trying to adapt to the world system of marketplace ministry, we now, well, we were supposed to take the gospel into the marketplace. Now the marketplace has become the place. Uh So we're doing more social gatherings than we are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And see, the thing about us as, as, um, as people is that if we don't Discipline, bring this body under subjection, teaching the word of God. It's not automatic. We all have an automatic default mechanism called sin. 
When something happens, that's why some of y'all, not everybody, but some of y'all can still cut somebody out when something happens. Because you have an automatic default mechanism that when something happens in your life, you hit that default. That automatic, that old nature, that old you. Hit it, and you go right back to the old way. Wow. So being in Christ, you have to learn. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have to learn what it means to be a Christian. And most people come into church and the first thing they do is they take you through a new membership class. And out the new membership, then we find your gift. Uh -huh. yeah. We find out what you like to do. Oh, you like to serve in hospitality. Oh, you like to sing. Oh, you can do the media. Instead of making sure that you are spiritually equipped and not just gifted. Look at your neighbor and say, are you spiritually equipped? Or are you just gifted? And so we have people falling by the wayside because the enemy is looking for people that are just gifted but not spiritually equipped. I said in corporate prayer today, I talked about having the power of God. Yeah. That the enemy only respects power. We can pray all day long. Y'all, my mama, go my. Listen, if you ain't got no power, he ain't going nowhere. Right. If you don't live a fasting and a consecrated life, you know the disciples walk with Jesus, and yet they still could not cast out a demon out of a little boy because the level of operation that demon that was set up in that boy's life they did not have enough power right. that type of power only came jesus said by prayer and fasting, and fasting. Yeah. and we have a lot of intercessors a lot of ministers we like to look cute we want to it's popular right now dr dare to be a preacher you know it's popular because people are looking at the exterior and i just be watching saying you won't have a clue what the warfare is like because it's not just looking good. It's not even sounding or mimicking somebody else. It's having the power of God on the inside of you. And the power that defeats the devil only comes through prayer and fasting. You can't fast because you got to lead corporate prayer. You can't fast because you have to sing. You can't fast because you have to serve. You have to live a fasted life. Yeah. Fasting disciplines this flesh so that you don't keep hitting that automatic default mechanism button, which is called sin. Yeah. How many of you found it easy to sin lately? Easy to think sinful thoughts lately? It's because you don't discipline your flesh. Right. If you don't discipline this flesh, it will not be disciplined. Yeah. You can't just get it on Sunday morning. This lifestyle, just like kids that go to school, this lifestyle cannot just be lived in the building. Right. right. When you go, when you send your children to school, the teacher sends them home with some homework so that they can master a particular skill that they were taught in that class. Uh -huh. They don't trust that they're going to come back to school the next day and just remember it, so they have to master it. Tell your neighbor, say, you have to master this Christian walk. So Romans 10 and 9 says, let's just break it down, let's take our time. Romans 10 and 9 says that if you confess Jesus with your, with your mouth, you see that if you confess Jesus, Romans 10, I want everybody to go to all these scriptures. If you don't have a Bible on your mobile device or anything, we'll get you one just waiting your hand. So Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, then what? He was great. That God raised him from the dead, you are saved. This is simply what it takes to receive Jesus as your Savior. It's not complicated. If you confess with your mouth, Father, I confess, I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead for my sins, you are saved. Confession is made with the mouth. Belief is in the heart. There's no tingling feeling. There's no, you know, uh, goosebumps. Oftentimes, it's a confession. Somebody shout, it's a confession. It's a confession. But the confession is made from your heart, which means that when you speak this thing from your heart, I got to tell you this. Because we don't have the googly bumps and the lights blinking on and off when it happens, sometimes we as believers don't think anything happened. That's why some people say, well, let me just make sure. You ought to know what you say. Right. Now, if you backslide, you need to rededicate, go on. But you shouldn't be 20 years saying, let me just make sure. No, you ought to know sure. Right. You ought to have a no-so on the inside. The only reason why we question if we're truly Christians it's because the fruit of our life doesn't always represent the tree right. that we should be living by. Right. And that's what we're going to talk about. So I want to help you to understand first salvation. Salvation is what to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, let me back it up just a few seconds. 
of salvation, the reason why we need a Savior is because God created a perfect world. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, God created a perfect world. He created a man and he created a woman and placed them in his perfect world. But God did not create them to be robots. He put in them a will. He put in them a desire to do things, whatever they wanted to do. And God gave them one command. Remember I told you, I said the title of this message is to live in the richest place in the world. The richest place in the world is to be in the will of God. And so he put them in his perfect world. And when he put them in his perfect world, they only had one, just, just one tiny, tiny requirement that they could not do. Only one law, only, only one restriction. You know, here we live in Atlanta, you know, and man, we can't run red lights. You can't steal, you know what I'm saying? You know, what else you can't do? What are some laws of the land? You can't hurt nobody. You know, it's some things, we have a lot of laws, right? Can you imagine living in a perfect world with God? And he says, there's only one law. I put a tree right here. Let's just talk. God says, I put a tree right here. Ah, Lee, hey, come over here. Let me show you this. I put a tree right here. And this tree, y'all cannot eat off of. You can have anything in this garden that you want. My only law, my only restriction is that you don't touch what's on this tree. You got it? You're like, God, right, God, lock in. Say less. That's what he said. Then life goes on, you know, as the young people say, life be life. You know, they take care of everything in the garden, take care of all the animals, you know, have conversations. They have dominion. So they tell a shark, shark, get back in that water. What are you doing? Get, get back in that water. You don't live on land. Shark says, okay, you gotta listen. They tell a lion, lion, don't you dare try to go eat that zebra. You better back up off of that zebra. You don't have dominion. They have total dominion. I need y'all to understand this. They have total dominion over everything. The things that we fear. People say, I'm afraid to get in the boat because I don't know what's going to happen. Listen, you got dominion. Can you imagine having dominion over everything, never walking in fear? Right. Well, this is the life that they live because they were in somebody's shot a perfect world. Y'all know God created a perfect world. And he put us in, see, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Anytime God does something, it's always perfect. That's why the only will of God, even though we say a permissive and a perfect, the only will of God we ought to walk in is in a perfect will of God. Because God created the perfect world. So they're going about talking about why we need a Savior. So they're going about their day, and then all of a sudden, Satan comes through this uh, servant. A snake. I said in corporate prayer that, you know, the enemy never comes like we think he's going to come. The Bible says that he comes as an angel of light. Now, how is it after that he couldn't see that they were having a conversation with Satan who came through a snake? Can he come through the tallest animal? Can he come through the strongest animal? He, you see what I'm saying? He didn't come through the most conniving. You know, monkeys, you have a conversation. Y'all see they can train monkeys and do all kinds of things. Right. Oh, no, he didn't come like that. He came through a little small animal that slides. Don't even seem like it have, you know, no power, no authority. No, no hands. You see what I'm saying? But he yet came. So they're not thinking because just like sometimes... We don't think Satan's going to come that way. Right. He never comes the way you think. He always comes the way you least expect. That's why you got to be on guard spiritually. Yeah. So he comes to them through a little slithery snake. This was the first conversation. But now say he comes. Why well, we need to save the purpose? Because sometimes people don't understand the importance of salvation. It's not to go to church. It's not to grow a church. It's not to have buildings. It's to live in the perfect will of God for your life. Yeah. What God originally created just for you. Yeah. So he comes and Satan comes through the serpent, serpent speaks through the snake. And, and come, let's, let's just look at this real quick. Hold your place right there. I've got two other scriptures to go to before after this. But let's go over to Genesis. Because one thing I want to do in this season, I want to teach you to read the word of God. Mm-hmm. We're the generation that we live off of reels. And we live off of, you know, cliche. So we've got to get back. Somebody show we've got to get back to reading the word of God. Get back to reading the word of God. So we see over here in Genesis. Let's look at this in Genesis chapter 3 in the King James Version of the Bible. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. He's questioned. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Let me pause right there. <laughs> First thing the enemy does when he comes to you, yep. he tries to get you to second guess God's authority. Please write that down. Yeah. First thing that the enemy does when he comes to you, all the time, he tries to get you to second guess God's authority. You know why we have a lot of, and I'm, I'm hoping I get a chance in this message to talk a little bit about carnal Christians. But the reason why we have carnal Christians, carnal Christians means that your mind is still focused on the things of this world. Hey, birthday girl back there, your mind is still focused on the things of this world and not the things of God. The reason why we still have carnal Christians is because we listen to the lies of the devil. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at look at this. Come in. Bring, bring yourselves in. Look at what Satan says to Eve. Look what he says. He literally tries to get her to say against God. In verse 4, it says, you shall not surely die. He's trying to, listen, and thank you. He's trying to manipulate her into believing that God lied to her. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell people when they certain stuff you hear, and they say, God told me this. I say, was that really God? Right. Because there's some stuff I'll be in, I know it ain't God. God never, he never gets you to second guess authority. He never gets you to second guess his word. He doesn't come that way. He is like, in order to build this walk with God, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I got to say this. You have to know God for yourself. The preacher has a responsibility to teach you the word, but you got to know God for yourself. Because when the preacher isn't there, the enemy ain't coming through the preacher to get to know. The enemy's going to come straight to your front door and knock on it. And you got to build this walk. I'm talking about salvation. I'm talking about salvation. In church, we've been full of the arts, full of all these social activities and gatherings. And people don't have the weapons to fight the enemy. Right. So we go off of conferences and we go off of cliches and we go off of feel-good messages. Right. But that's not going to get us to heaven. Right. That's not going to help us to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, you always have a God on your back mm -hmm. because of who you represent. Right. Jesus said, he said it like this, if they afflict it, they hate it, your master, how much more are you? We painted Christianity as a feel-good gospel that people don't go through anything. So when you go through something, you know what people do? They question God. Well, I don't, I don't think this God, this ain't the church I'm supposed to be at. Because if it was, I'd be prospering by now. Do you realize you got to fight yeah. for everything? you in this world. Right. You're in the world. It ain't the church. If you didn't fought for what you get to have, then you're in the right place. Right. Woe to the one that sit in a comfortable place and seemingly grow materially, but never grow spiritually. You still can vape. You still can smoke. You still can cuss. You still can sleep around. See, that's we build the churches like that. That's what people are doing. They build the churches like, oh, I feel good. Talk to your flesh. Hey, we all can't just come to church. We got budgets to meet. We got quotas to meet. We got goals to meet. Come into the building. We're going to make you feel good. Uh -huh. The church is almost a part-time club now. That's what they do in the club, right? Yeah. They even tell you. They even give you a discount. Ladies, get in on Tuesdays. They tell you drinks before 10. Come on, somebody. Free. Because yeah. they know by the time you get about three free drinks, you then forgot how much you paid for for the rest of them after 10. Yeah, hello. They know you ain't leaving anyway before one, so they got that money back. Tell somebody, say, that's the grand hustle right there. That's the grand hustle. So we got to get back to the place. Somebody shout where Jesus is. How many of you want Jesus? Amen. No, I'm serious. Like, how many of you really want Jesus? Because if you don't want Jesus, then you'll leave a church and you'll go where you can feel good. Right. You know why we want to feel good? Because it's in our flesh. Yes. Our flesh always want to feel good. Our flesh yeah. don't want to be there. Listen, not me either. Right. Our flesh don't want to do right. It's not in us. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to show you how it all got messed up in the perfect world. Right. 
Because our flesh never wanted to do right. Mm -hmm. And we can't do this on our own. Right. See, you can't do this on your own. Right. You need the greater one. Yes. The helper. Yes. See, Jesus knew that when he left, mm -hmm. he couldn't trust that you was going to figure this thing out by yourself. Right. He knew them jokers couldn't do it for three years while he was there. He had one that betrayed him, one that was always doubting. Peter still cussing. Come on. So he said, I know they walk with me. Right. And they still fall fell short. Father, they going to need the help. But send them some help down. See, he was well acquainted with our afflictions. Right. So Jesus understands what we go through. You're never talking to somebody when you're talking to the Father. You're never talking to a God that didn't understand because Jesus knows where you are. He went through everything you went through and still did not sin. Right. That's why he can pray you through through the Holy Spirit. So he knew you would need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Let me put a pause on Let's go back to Genesis. So Satan convinces Eve. What does he convince Eve? That what God said about eating that tree was a lie. Right. Can we break it down? Oh, yeah. He literally was trying to convince Eve that that is not going to happen to you. Right. Sure. See, if the enemy can get you to second guess God, then you're double minded. Yeah. And when you're double minded, you live and you straddle the fence. Yeah. So we have so many Christians, it's easy to fall short. And see, this is, thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the thing. We gotten away from this in the church because people say, oh, they just beating you down with the word. They just making you. Let me tell you something. I've been pastor for 20 years. You can't tell grown folks nothing. Right. That they don't, if they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. Right. You can't make nobody do nothing. So nobody's beating you over the head with a religion. Right. They're building you so yeah. you can have a relationship. Amen. Yeah. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. you're living in this world and you're, you have all these benefits right. of a good life. What I tell you? The richest place in the world. But you'll never have the access to it simply because you're not in the will of God. For Amen. Yeah. And God said to me, he's been dealing with me, Deacon Mike, over these last couple of weeks. As I'm just watching everything that's going on in churches. I'm watching things, and I'm just like, where is, where is the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. where, why have we fallen short? Yeah. God took me back real quick. I'm coming back to here. God took me back real quick to my 20s. And I remember I was in the church, and I was built and trained and all that wonderful stuff. And I thought, I said, God, what, what happened? What, what was the missing link? And the missing link is something we do here at Lifeline that most ministries oftentimes miss, is that you can't force people to serve God. Like, in other words, it was mandatory for us to be in the ministry of helps. That we come to prayer on Thursdays, you know, that they check our giving to make sure um, we had to be at church and serving. You know, it was all these requirements. We had like three outreaches a month. You know, all these requirements. Basically, we was in church all the time. We never had a chance to go live what was, you know, what we were taught outside the building. Right. Anybody hear me? Yeah. You kept us in a box. So we never got a chance to experience life. I'm trying to show you where we are. Yeah. We never got a chance to experience life. So now some of us have grown up. And now that we've grown up and we feel we've got freedom. Uh -huh. Somebody's got freedom. Because if you're, if you're in Christ, you, really have, you don't have no freedom. Your freedom is in him. But now we have what we feel freedom because we come to church like this. Oh, ain't nobody requiring nothing. Oh, ain't nobody checking. Oh, I just drag on in when I get on in. Well, guess what? That's who you was anyway. Right. And if you had to be if it had to be mandatory or be in you right. to serve God, the problem is you learn religion right. and you never build a relationship. Right. Religion and routine. So what is this ministry doing? It's teaching you how to build a relationship. Right. Can I break it down? I'm coming back. Can I break it down to you? Yes. Dr. Brody, you married to Tiffany. Yes. You don't just have a, a woman. You have a wife. Yes. So because you have a wife and not a boo thing, right. you know, you have a relationship. Yes. Which means as a married man, uh -huh. she don't have to say, can you call me and let me know where you are or vice versa. Because you have a relationship out of respect. There are some things 
that just naturally yes. transpire because you respect and you love that person. Amen. Amen. See, there's always, a, anybody get it? There's always a difference in a relationship and religion. Right. And so many people were built in religion that in religion you had to be, it had to be mandatory. You had to be required to do certain things. Right. You know why their marriage works? Because it's a relationship. Yes. It's built out of love. Yes. Can y'all write this down? Relationships. It's built out of love. Yes. It's built out of respect. Amen. And it's built out of trust. Yes. Yeah. Those are three things. Y'all write it down. Those are three things that build a relationship. Thank you so much, y'all. Those are three things that build a relationship. Mm -hmm. Love, mm -hmm. respect, mm -hmm. and trust. Which means that when you have a relationship with somebody, you don't treat them any kind of way, right? Right. You don't act any kind of way. If you have a relationship with the Father, somebody says, hey, I'm a part of the, you know, ministry of health. I'm serving in the media. Yeah, we have things coming on time because, you know, you got to turn equipment on. But you do it out of love. Ain't nobody watching over you. You don't need somebody to watch over you. Right. See, this is where some of us, we have been missing it. Yeah. And we think because it's not mandatory, because we were built from religion, we think it's because it's not mandatory, then it's not required. Tell somebody, say, everything is required of you when you serve God. Everything is required when you serve God. And then I remember there's, there was a time when, you know, in the ministry, and one particular person, they were about five minutes late. They told the person they couldn't serve. They said, you couldn't serve. Because they didn't ask why the person was five minutes late. Didn't ask that they, they just said, you can't serve. Go sit in the congregation. Why? That's what religion does. Yeah. Religion tells you you can't serve God based off of whatever I require to serve. Right. Ooh, that's good. How about we serve God simply because he's God? No, none of us deserve the grace that we walk in. Right. We but it's on our life because of who Jesus is. Yeah. And so because we built for the longest a relationship, uh, we had a religious aspect of what we thought was a relationship. God says, now I want you in this season right. to build a real relationship with me. Amen. When nobody have to run behind you and say, hey, you didn't call and say you weren't coming. Hey, where everything good? No. We, so, we have so been trained through religion mm -hmm. that we think, oh, they, they don't care about me because ain't nobody check. You have a relationship. Right. It's with your Savior. You have a requirement to your house. You made a commitment when you came to this church or whatever church it is. Yes. So you serve God. Somebody shout, I serve God off of my relationship. I serve God off of my relationship. Which means you have to build this relationship. You realize I read Romans 10 and 9. How many of you saw it? Romans 10 and 9, you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what happened was you went from one kingdom called the kingdom of darkness and you came into the kingdom of God and God's kingdom it operates totally different yeah. than the kingdom of darkness so we come in and I'm going back with this one scripture in Genesis we come in when we accept Jesus as our savior we come in as babes in Christ yeah. okay if you 50 60 70 right. okay if you know five scriptures yeah. <laughs> You have to grow spiritually Amen. just like you have to grow naturally. Amen. And the challenge is we trust people in serving and they have not had a chance to grow spiritually. You know, when you start to grow, you start to see the characteristics of Christ in your life. Yeah. It's called fruit. I, I'm going to probably pick it up in the second part of this teaching series. But you start to see the characteristics of the fruit yeah. of Jesus in your life. So let's go in here real quick. Let me just lay this foundation. We're going to get on now. So sir, the serpent says in Genesis 3 and 4, he says unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Verse 5, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Verse 7 of Genesis 3, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. Let me read verse 8. I want you to see this. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence. Now they're hiding. Right. Hid themselves from the oh God. Thank from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Mm. See, when the enemy tries to convince you to sin against God, mm -hmm. what once was a, a joy to be in his presence, mm -hmm. now we become afraid mm -hmm. to be in his presence. We hide ourselves. You know why the enemy pulls people out of church? So that they can go hide. Mm -hmm. They can go everywhere else. They can go to social gatherings. They can go to fellowship. Y'all see this? Anybody seeing this stuff happen on social? Yeah. They can go to sorrows. They can go to brunch. Oh, brunch going to be filled in the next house. Yeah. They can go everywhere else. Yeah. Like the house yeah. of God. Yeah. Because in the house of, in the true house of God, uh -huh. the presence of God is. And in the presence of God, we see our sins. Yeah, amen. In the presence of God, you might not come in this church and not see who you really are. Right. When I come in church, I see who I really am. Yeah. Folks be looking at each other. No, I'm looking at me. Right. I'm looking at, I, I see me. I say, God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. Because you see yourself the way God sees you. When you really get in the presence of God. Amen. You can't stand in his presence and not see yourself. Yeah. Come on. And so the enemy pulls people out of church so you never get in the presence of God to see yourself so that you can repent. Yeah. Talking about the richest place in the world. Mm -hmm. It's in the will of God for your life. Yes. So when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they ate of that tree, some people say it's an apple. We don't talk about, you know, Dr. Brody's version of where the apple iPhone came from and the big the, the fruit that was there. <laughs> That's a conspiracy. That's a conspiracy. <laughs> the thing is, when you sin against God, when Adam and Eve did, they sinned against God. They simply disobeyed what he said. Which meant the perfect world that he created for them, now they have disobeyed what he told them. Don't. Let's, let, let me look. Let's go back. Let's go to Genesis 2. Let me find it real quick. Genesis 2. In Genesis 2, look at verse 7. Let's look at verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. God put him where he wanted him to be. Mm -hmm. And out of the ground made, um, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of even the water guard and water the garden. And this, it was parted and became into four, um, into four heads. I'm going to get to that one part. Um, verse 16. Well, let me go to 15. Verse 15. Skip down to verse 15 to Genesis 2. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded this was a command. The Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the life, of the, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, I'm just talking about the richest place in the world. The richest place in the world is to be in the will of God. Yeah. And so God told Adam, but you know he ain't exempt Eve. He told them, the day that you eat, listen, you can have everything in this garden. Remember I told y'all this in the beginning. Yeah. He said, listen, you can have everything, everything, but you can't touch this. Now, this is Marla and Thomas version. This is what I truly believe, Chelsea. I truly believe that that tree represented the tide. Wow. I believe that tree represented the tide. Because that's how the tithe is to God. The Bible says that the tithe, which is a tenth of our earnings and increase, that is holy unto the Lord. That it belongs to him. We should never touch the tithe because it's holy unto him. And so the tithe necessarily wasn't in place in this part because remember he had just formed them. Yeah, yeah. In the but it's the same mindset that God has with us. In every generation, God brings to us 
Yeah. That which he needs to relate that it belongs to him. Something belongs to God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, you belong to God. You belong to God. So I believe this was a precursor to God teaching us the time because God never taught a lesson that he had not already taught. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Can I say that again? Yeah. God never taught a lesson. He didn't teach a lesson to Abraham that he had not already taught to Adam. He didn't teach a lesson to the disciples that he had not already taught to Adam. God shaped and formed and built this entire world in the garden. Everything happened in the garden. There was nothing new that was done. It was already done there. So every generation it came about in a different way. Whether it was the tabernacle, whether it was the priest, come on somebody. Whatever it was, everything was already shaped, done, and formed. That's why God said when he finished it, he said it is finished. It was on the seventh day that the Lord did what he rested. There was nothing else that needed to be done. He just went on into every generation and manifested that which he said to Adam. Yeah. It would be spiritually un illegal for him to expect us to do something and Adam couldn't do it. Right. Right. <laughs> it would be spirit. God don't operate like that. He's just. Yeah. So there's no requirement he's asking of you that he didn't ask of Adam. Right. And there's no requirement he asks of Adam that he would not necessarily ask of you. And it was done. Right. And that's why I said, I believe that this is Mama Thomas version that that tree represented the time. So the moment they touched would belong to God because he told them, don't touch me. Right. It's mine. Yeah. And the day that you touch it, you will surely die. Yeah. And Satan comes to them with the very thing. That's why people have a problem giving in church. That's why some have a problem with money, the spirit of greed, simply because the enemy always tries to attack where he knows your treasury is. Yeah. Ah. If your treasure is money, he's coming for money. If your treasure is children, he's coming for your children. If your treasure is your relationship, your listen, he tried. where your treasure is, the Bible says, that where your heart will be also. Yeah. And so Adam and Eve disobeyed, talking about the richest place in the world. They disobeyed God and not only touched the fruit, but they ate it. Mm -hmm. The moment that they ate the fruit, wow. the moment they ate it, the Bible says their eyes was open. Uh -huh. Now watch this. This is modern times. Sometimes you have to read prophetically the scriptures. Because people think that it was something magical in the fruit. No, it was nothing magical in the fruit. It was in the act of disobedience or the act of obedience. All the years they walked around, they walked around in obedience to God because they had never touched it. Or oh, they might have looked at it, but they had never touched it. So as long as they didn't touch it, they were walking in obedience to God. But the moment they touched it, they walked in disobedience to what God said. Because he gave them a commandment. How many of us be living like this? This is why we need a Savior trying to show you how it's so easy to hit that automatic default sin mechanism button. It's really easy. Because this is how we govern and live our lives all the time. God said, don't do this, we do it. God said, and we're thinking, well, God ain't full of these rules and regulations. Listen, if the world full of them, he got to give you some. Right. He knows by now. He only gave them one and they couldn't even follow that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> then he gave us ten and they still couldn't follow that. Amen. Then Jesus came and he said, I am the Lord. Come on. And all, all things that the prophet said, he should, and we still couldn't. Somebody yeah. shout, still couldn't. Yeah. So while there was one ten, you got to believe there's going to be something. There ain't going to be nothing. God don't just say, live your best life. Right. <laughs> yeah. That ain't what God said. That's what the cliche of the world said. You can have it all. Is that what God said? God never said we can have it all. You can have what's allotted in the will of God for your life. The all that's included in your benefit package. So in Genesis, Adam and Eve sinned. When they sinned, now sin was passed. Sin is disobedience. Sin is iniquity. It was now in us. I'm just trying to help lay a solid foundation on the richest place in the world. I'm teaching you all what it means to be saved. Because we have too many Christians that know how to come to church. And some of y'all even good with tithing and giving offerings. But what is your life like when you leave this place? Right. Mm -hmm. I saw something recently. I had to question it, Dr. Dan. 
Because I'm, I'm checking my circles now. I don't know about y'all. I'm checking folks. And, and I saw something recent where somebody I knew was at this secular event. And they had dressed all out. And I mean, it was provocative and everything. I was like, yeah, I'm getting ready to cut some folks off in this season. Yeah. Amen. Because see, who you associate with Come when on. God opened your eyes yeah. to the revelation of who you are. Yeah. Listen, I told you the enemy will come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a wolf in sheep's clothing, and he'll get close enough to you, you be thinking, "Oh, they, that's just how they are." No, if that's not how I am, tell somebody if I don't roll like that, I'm not rolling with people who roll like that. You got to check your circle in 2023, because okay. it's a lot of deception that's going on in the world, and we as Christians have to heal. So we get so busy, stop wanting to be light and love and popular. Right. We're the Christ-like people. Amen. Jesus didn't care nothing about being popular. Right. They want to give him a platform. They want to make him great. Hey, they try to take him. We're gonna make you a king, man. You so bad. Right. We're gonna set you up for life. Jesus got a link on them jokers. Now I need you to set me up. <laughs> I don't need to be on everybody's IG. I ain't gotta have a million followers. Come on, somebody. Jesus, I don't want what the world has. Amen. I want what God has. Amen. Not so it's not too many preachers and leaders. We're not doing that. We don't hunger for God like that anymore. All we want is the applause of the crowd. Right. The fanfare of the audience. Right. Come into my church, because if you come into my church and fill it up, and it look like yeah. Jesus is here. I don't want it to look like Jesus is here. Right. I don't want Jesus to be here. Right. I'm not concerned about a look. Come on, somebody. I talk, I ain't concerned about no building no more. Amen. I just want Jesus. Anybody, you just want Jesus? Amen. And let him do the work. Amen. I got two minutes, I'm going to wrap this up. So while we need a savior, when Adam and Eve disobeyed, the sin was passed on to all mankind. They tried throughout the years to offer up blood of bulls and goats and you know, all kinds of sacrifices to make what the scriptures declare an atonement. Mm -hmm. An atonement is to cover up, to make an atonement for sin. Mm -hmm. But it did not last forever. It was only for a season. So the priest would have to keep offering sacrifices mm -hmm. and keep offering sacrifices and keep, off, keep atoning. Mm -hmm. The high priest would go in once a year and he would make an atonement for the sins of the whole nation. Mm -hmm. And the system Remember what I told you, there's nothing that God reinstituted. There's nothing that God had to teach people that did not happen in the garden. Right. Mm. There's nothing. There's nothing happening now that did not happen in the garden. Right. I, would, I, I, I would go so far deep, I ain't even going to go there and tell y'all about cell phones and iPads. There's nothing new. There's just things that man discovered. Yeah. Man invent, but everything was already in the car. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Everything was already in the garden. So when the atonement of the blood of bulls and goats, because the only way you can atone or cover up a sin, this is God's system, was to sacrifice an animal that had no blemish. Yeah. Because animals represented sinlessness. Yeah. Yeah. But it could not be an animal that had blemish. And so God's system of atoning or covering up for sin, somebody shout out this God's system, God. was that blood would be shed. Mm -hmm. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they were the first recipients of grace. Because they tried to cover themselves with fig trees. They hid first. Then they tried to make themselves an outfit with fig leaves and trees that come. But God said, I still see your sin. Yeah, come on. Now. I still smell your sin. Because man can never cover up. God, you the Holy Ghost. Man can never cover up sin. Nope. We can't, we couldn't do it then and we can't do it now. That's why it comes up before God's nostrils. Yeah. The only thing that can cover up the sins of mankind is that an animal has to be shed. Yeah. And so in the garden, animal, God shed it. An animal for the first time. Mm. And the blood of that animal, when he skinned it, he then made clothes. Yeah. How you got this t shirt? It came from some wool, came from some cotton, came from something from an animal. Amen. Something was woven together. Mm. Isn't something God was the first one, first designer? 
<laughs> his system. If we just understand how we're walking in God's system in a modern day way. Yeah. He shed the blood of an animal mm -hmm. so that the skin could cover us, the animal skin, because the fig leaves weren't doing it. Come on, somebody. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, your fig leaves not doing it. Bishop going so your ball, your fig leaves coming off. You didn't try to string together. Your fig leaves not covering. It's going to take the blood of Jesus. Amen. And this is why we call him the blood, the blood, the blood, because the blood covers yeah. our sin. So in the garden, God he, he, he slaughtered the animal, covered, used the blood to cover their sins, made atonement for their sins, and now they can finish and have the conversation with God. Yeah. Yeah. No longer could they stay in the perfect world. Right. Because when they disobey God, sin has a consequence. Right. The Bible says, for the wages, that's the payment, yeah. the wages of sin is death. Yeah. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So sin has a payment, which means we all got to leave here someday. Because yeah. God told them the day that you eat it, watch this, y'all see it in the scriptures. We read it, God said, the day that you eat this tree, you shall surely die. Sure. That's exactly what happened. That's why we go to funerals. See, I told Elder Heard and then Lady Heard the other day, I said, why do we grieve and mourn? And God gave me a revelation because you was never meant to die. Right. The reason why it's hard for us to say goodbye to our loved ones, we was never built to die. We were built to live forever. Right. That's why God put us in a perfect world. But the day we disobey Adam and Eve disobey God, we then the consequences of so it grieves us when somebody died because right. our spirit know you weren't built to die. You was built to live forever. Yes. So then we now we have to die because the wages of sin is death. Yeah. But guess what? There's a gift. Uh -huh. A free gift. Yeah. The gift of God is eternal life yeah. through Jesus Christ. So why don't we accept Jesus as our Savior as Romans 10, 9 taught us so that we can have eternal life. That means I got to leave earth. The earth is just my resting spot. We think right. heaven is. We tell people rest in peace. Baby, you better get some peace down here. Because when you get to heaven, you ain't got to tell them to rest in peace. They are already working. They're doing the works of Jesus. Come on, somebody. That ain't that great power of witnesses. They yeah. sitting back on the recline of resting. Right. Come on now. They're working. They're doing what they were sitting over here to do. They're alive. They're breathing. They're living. They're working. Amen. Yeah. They're working. What you were sitting on earth to do, then you get to go fulfill it in eternal life. Uh -huh. See, the reason why we don't have an eternal perspective because we had not yet. Right. So we only see life from an earthly perspective. But if you get in the Word of God, you can see it from an eternal perspective because there are snippets in the scripture that reveal the manifested presence of God right. that tell us about people who uh, uh, Lazarus and the rich young ruler who was in there they were alive and that and that rich young ruler he was over there in hell burning and asked and then asked Jesus send Lazarus to come and just give me just a little bit of water so I could cool down Okay, and then he even he even asked, "Can you go back and send them to my hometown so my brothers and them don't come here?" He said, "They ain't believe the prophets." Yeah. So they sure ain't gonna believe one from the dead. You you realize eternal? I need y'all to catch this heaven, eternal life. Mm -hmm. You don't get to come back. Eternal life is just that eternity. Yeah. There is no end. So whatever that end is, mm -hmm. that's what you're saying. Right. What's the assignment of the church? What's the purpose of the church? So that you can get to eternity. Help you to live mm -hmm. this life of Christ here on earth. Now that you accept Jesus as your Savior. Yeah, Adam and Eve blew it. The bulls of the blood of bulls and goats didn't do it. So God Himself came in the form of man yeah. in the person of Jesus Christ. Because we could not we couldn't save ourselves, y'all. Right. Oh, woe to the one that try to save themselves. You know how people say, I'm going to church as soon as I get myself right. You can't. Right. right. It's fig leaves. Yeah. Same thing Adam and Eve tried. Right. Stop putting the fig leaves on. I surrender to Jesus. Jesus had to die for you. He had to shed his blood for you because his blood was sinless. Can I say it like this? He was God. The scripture said he was God in the flesh. God loved the world. Y'all 
know John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth believe in him shall not perish shall not die but have eternal life and you're going to leave this world but you don't die I know that's how we related oh they died no they didn't they just relocated Right. Because yeah. <laughs> when something dies, it no longer exists, right? Correct. When it dies, it no longer exists. No, they just relocated. The scripture said, can we just talk about what the scripture said? All right. Yeah. That you don't die. Mm -hmm. You have eternal life. Yeah. So I tell people, even about LA, my son, I said, he was promoted to heaven. Yeah. They just relocated. I know we have to relate it in our own words. I get it. I'm not trying to change your. You know, mindset on how you speak, but I want you to understand that they relocate. They're not dead. Right. And so, therefore, you need a Savior. The richest place in the world is to be in the will of God. And you need a Savior. The only one that can cover your sins is Jesus. So, when Romans 10 and 9 says that when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, because it's so simple, Pastor Heard, we think it ought to be deeper, but it's not. So when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're saying, Jesus, Jesus, you was raised. You, you were murdered. You were crucified. Your blood was shed so that I could have eternal life. life yeah. And then when you come into this knowledge that you now are saved because of Romans 10 and 9, now you are a baby Christ. Just like in the natural, when a woman is pregnant all their life, you don't expect for that newborn baby to come out and learn how to drive a car. Right. You don't expect for that newborn baby to learn how to work a nine to five. You don't expect for that newborn baby to come out and learn how to bake a cake. That baby has to go through processes of life. Yeah. You have to learn that. You have to teach them things. They have to learn what life is about. So you take, you send them to school. They have relatives that are stamped around them to help them shape them and mold them yeah. into their purpose and into their destiny. Well, just like that baby that comes out of the womb, it's that in the natural. That's how you are in the realm of the spirit when you come into the knowledge of God. Amen. Yes. The Bible says that we're babes and we eat the sincere milk. We, we drink the sincere milk of the word of God. So God gives you the word that you can handle. The challenge is we keep looking at our age and we say, well, I'm 80 something. You know, well, I'm 50 something. By now, I ought to know this. Give yourself time. Amen. You have to give yourself time to learn the word of God. And you learn the word of God by studying. Now, there's some people that's been Christians for 30 years. And guess what? They still babes in Christ. Because they never opened the Bible to learn the word of God for themselves. They built their lives on religion instead of learning about a relationship. What God wants is a relationship. Can you imagine what this church would look like if everybody said, I want a relationship. Oh, I want to come into corporate prayer because I realize I want a relationship. I want to to glean from other leaders and glean from my pastor because I want a relationship. I don't want to just be a church member. I don't want to just be here. You know why people are fickle and they're in and out and in and out is because they don't have a relationship. Yeah, right. Without a relationship, it's impossible to understand what purpose is about. So we'll seek it in other things. The Bible says in the last days, we'll keep unto ourselves teachers having itching ears. We replace the church with motivational speakers. We replace the church with sorrows and mentorship fellowships. We replace the church and the voice of God through pastors with all types of social activities. Yeah. They glean our attention and we gain knowledge, but we're not growing spiritually. Yeah. Wow. We've learned this generation has taught us to master social media. To master outreach on social media. But we're not building followers of Jesus. Right. We're not building those and teaching those and feeding those so that you can grow spiritually in the word of God. Oh, we look like a good church. I'm talking about overall the body of Christ. The body of Christ looks good. Yeah. But if we build on any other foundation mm -hmm. than Jesus Christ, it's not going to last. Right. Yeah. Our church over the last five years have built on the arts. If we have a great praise team, if we have popular singers in it, you know, dance ministry, you got more twirlers than you got members in the seat. Come on, sir. Uh -huh. We've been built on the art because we've been building on entertainment. Right. Instead mm -hmm. of a building on the word of God. Come on, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Father, I want to live. 
in the richest place in the world. That place is in the will of God. I want y'all to stay in this series right here. I'm going to take my time in this series because I want to build you. I want to show you what salvation means so that the world never has a draw to you. You don't want what the world has. Like when you leave here, I want you to be so inspired and so motivated to learn more of God. I want you to go back and listen to this message again. Say, God, I want so much of you. I, it's all I want is you. Because if you understand truly the price Jesus paid, why wouldn't you want all of him? You got to do some work. And the enemy is counting on us not doing the work. He's counting on us being defeated Christians. He don't care nothing about you going to church. I said in corporate prayer, he don't care nothing about you giving ready. That's why the wicked are wealthy. He don't care about you having a look. He just don't want you to walk in obedience to the word of God. Because that's the richest place. When you walk in the will of God, you walk in obedience. Adam and Eve got kicked out because of disobedience. Disobedience is as the Bible says, the sin of witchcraft. When we don't follow God's way, we are committing the act of witchcraft. And I know, our grown human nature, you know, you know it's like our kids go through things. Can't tell them nothing. Yeah. And you just ever see, you watch your kids make bad decisions, and you're like, if you just had asked me, said something. But they got to figure it out the hard way. See, when God created us, he didn't make us robots. He gave you a will. Yeah. He, gave, he gave you a choice. Yeah. That's why, I don't care what they say, robot stuff ain't never going to replace man. Because you have to program it. And reasoning is not something that you can program. Amen. Amen. That's why when you call a, you call a you know, phone system and you call a bank or whatever, and you, they don't have none of your options. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, push A if you want to go get push B. And you're like, no, I just want to ask one question. Right. And then you push zero, and they're like, they take you all the way back over. Come on. Yeah. And you're like, give me a doctor's go inside. Yeah. Because they can't reason. Reasoning comes from man. Yeah. That's a part of the nature and characteristic that God put on the inside of you. It's your mind, your will. And your emotions. Yeah. You know what it's called? Flesh. Yeah. And this flesh yeah. is what God allowed us to walk in that we discipline. This is the part of our nature that we are in total control of. Yeah. The flesh. The carnal nature. That's what the flesh is to be carnal. Oh, y'all stay with the series. How many of y'all are staying? You say, I'm not going to miss a Sunday. I'm not going to miss a Tuesday. I'm staying with this word. Because God wants to build your relationship. And I'm going to say this. It's going to challenge some of you. Because some of us haven't been accustomed to sitting for so long to hear the word. Without getting up, dancing, and shouting. No, for this season. We're going to build you. Amen. That's what God called us to do. Thank you. 20 years ago, real strong people. Yeah. You didn't dance enough. Tell your name, you didn't dance enough. Yeah. We might have some special services of, and we got the conference, but right now, we got to get the word of God on the inside of us. Yeah. Yeah. So we can live this Christian life. And when we live it, we can live it that people want what we have. They say that you're a real Christian right there. Yeah. She's a real Christian. Now, I don't know about the mother folks that go over there to think about the. John Thompson's AMC, come on. <laughs> but you're going to live it because your attitude, the fruit, call it the fruit, it's going to be evident in your life. Amen. You won't gossip. Right. You won't worry. You. you won't complain. I know we got some work. So just shout. I got some work. We turn the secular music off. Come on. I know that's your little get up in the morning. You know you got your favorite one. I, I used to have my favorite one. Good morning. Gorgeous. <laughs> you know, we get our little, y'all know, where y'all at? Come on. Stop acting like y'all ain't in here. We get our little, we'll dip in the world every now and then. Yeah. Oh, it's just the people on this side. These folks will be insane. Every now and then, we'll put our little foot in the world. Because we just got, you know, it ain't harm, it ain't no, but did Jesus put his foot in the world? He never needed what the world had. 
but yet he was able to walk in it and change life. Yeah. That's why marketplace ministry ain't effective. Because yeah. people walking in and talking about they got marketplace ministry and I ain't seeing no ministry. Right. Yeah. I'm not seeing no fruit. You making business deals, you making business transactions, but ain't no ministry. I tell people, sit me at any table in any room. I'm preaching Jesus. Yeah. I ain't calling him him. I'm not calling him the higher power. Come on, somebody. Right. I'm not changing my terminology. Right. It's in Jesus. Yeah. We're running errands for. So if you're not changing people in the marketplace, then you ain't got marketplace ministry. Right. You just in somebody's shop. They just in some of these folks out here in the marketplace. Everything ought to change yeah. in our lives. Let's take our foot out the world. How many of you say, I'm, I'm getting my foot out the world? I'm my foot out the world. In other words, if your Savior didn't do it, stop putting the pain things on yourself. Amen. Get your foot. Come on. Get your foot. Pick it up. Get, get it. It's going to challenge you. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's going to challenge you. But to live Christ's life. Woo! That's the richest place. I'm just trying to help you get there. Come on, let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the entrance of your word. God, help us to get into the richest place in the world. The will of God for our lives. Help us to fully obey you. The seed has been planted on today. It was just the seed. There's so much more I know you want to teach us. And our spirits are open. We're ready, God. We, we're hungry. We want everything that you have for us. And God, we thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, repeat after me and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive me of my sins. I confess Jesus. All I confess is this. Sin. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead just for me. I'm saved, born again by the Spirit of God. If you pray that prayer, now you know what it means, right? It's the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary for the remission that means to wipe out your sins. So our opening text was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. We're the Christians in. Welcome to your new life. Welcome to your new life. Now I know you still remember the old life and you won't be tempted to go back and do some of the things in the old life. But that's why we're here. Right. To help you. Right. You obey. Christian on his mother's shoulder. He's obey. Yes. He's the only one that can get away in this church receiving. Because yes. he's a baby. Right. You see, babies can get away with certain things. So God walks us in grace. Now if you sit over there and you pass the herd sleep, it's something wrong. Because if that's how you got to go to bed. Right. On Saturday night. Because yeah. you're grown. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it's babies in Christ. And let me say this. Be patient with people. Be patient. Just because you might be an adolescent in Christ and it's still a baby. Be patient. Not everybody is on the same level, but we're all headed in the same direction. Amen. That was good. So stay here. Stay right. Stay planted. Stay planted. All this Carnal nature is going to be tempted to go back. I need, I need to shout more. I need to. Uh, I know you've been trained. Right. For religion. That button will be cool. Be trained. But you got to see, I'm going to stay with Jesus. I got to build this relationship. Yeah. Bishop Thomas has called me to help me build my relationship. Yeah. I'm on an assignment, family. Amen. Yeah, and Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for this teaching message. In Jesus' name, the richest place in the world. Our beautiful ladies from hospitality, they're going to come down and give you so good to have Brother Kevin back with us on today. Amen. Right there in the virtual sanctuary are the ways that you can give our beautiful ladies from hospitality. They're going to place an envelope in your hand. We're going to honor God in our time and honor God in our offering. You know, I always say, we don't have to check ties and all offerings because when people have a relationship, it's your good pleasure to honor God. It's your good pleasure to obey God. Amen. Amen. No fig trees, no fig leaves. We're not covering up, but we're going to honor. The ways you can give are also posted here on the back of some of your envelopes, and they're also here. Our cash app is dollar sign, lifeline, FWC. You can rush the sales as you prepare your gifts. 
on Cash App is Dollar Sign Lifeline FWC. Right there in the virtual sanctuary, we have it pinned in the comment section the ways you can get it. Our sale is 770-885-9490. Hallelujah. And for those that are texting in in our church family, you already have that program in. You text to give information. Woo, somebody shot down to the richest place. I want to be there. Oh, I want to be there. I want to be there. The will of God. The will of God. Father, thank you for the word. Malachi 3 and 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Where in have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. God says, Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be need in mine house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God goes on to say, You will rebuke the devour for our sake. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you and we praise you. As you prepare to get some love, again, our cash app is dollar sign like on FWC. And in the comment section, come on and put it there. Let us know that you're giving on today. Put it in there and say, Bishop Thomas, I'm sewing. And let us know the ways you're sewing. If you're giving through cash app, put that on there. If you're giving through sale, put that on there as well. The richest place in the world. Father, thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. So glad to have Evangelist Harry Ford and Dr. Olivia Carter in the house of God and justice. Amen. As Mother Lois Perkins was relocated, promoted to heaven, got her crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. We're so glad they came in the house of God. And thank you for all the church family that's been loving on them, supporting them, taking food, or just showing up. I tell people your presence is priceless. And you don't know you need somebody until you need them. And I tell people all the time, listen, y'all hear me, you don't know you need somebody until you need them. So when you show kindness, kindness comes back to you. Amen. You reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. You reap what you sow. That's why I show up. Wherever is somebody, I'm showing up. Come on. We had Sister Irvin's husband been in and out the hospital. How many of y'all been showing up? Y'all go to the hospital? Have y'all visited? Have you called? You don't know when your day will come and you're going to need somebody to be there for you. So you be what you sow because it means a lot. And we can't require or expect something that we never showed up for nobody else. You don't plant those seeds, those seeds can't grow back up for you. Amen. It's good to text. It's good to call. But lay hands on yourself and say, Father, help me to show up to you. Show up at the hospital. Show up at the nursing home. Show up at the funeral. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, I can see it. It's not until you need somebody that you realize, I, I need y'all to show up too. We take for granted the little things. Yes, uh -huh. I'm always it's in the office. If you're tapping to get wake your hand, we'll make sure that, all right, we'll get you evangelist for it. All right, has everybody come on, rest of your feet in this virtual sanctuary and in the building, you had a chance to fill out your envelopes? All right. If you will, from the back, if you'll just come on those outside walls, we'll start in the back that way. On this side, and y'all will just cross each other and go back. We'll sort it. Okay, all right. Go that way. All right. Thank you, Jesus. We just try to keep the middle aisle free so nobody trips up over the camera. It's to protect you. We want to protect everybody. Amen. Come on. God loves a cheer. Go give us a moment and put a smile on your face. Put a dance in your heart. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, say, God, I thank you for blessing me to be able to give. What a word. 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 Yes, Lord. What a word. What a word on today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a word on today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into Lifeline Family Worship Center. Thank you, Father, for blessing us to be a blessing. We declare that every need of this ministry is met, exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask for thing. We thank you, Father God, that you said you are a cheerful giver. And so, Father, we choose to give to your house cheerfully. We thank you, Father. We don't live by budgets because you're not a budgeting God. You are Jehovah Jireh, which means you've exceeded our expectations. 
And I ask, oh God, that you touch the hearts of the vision runners, vision carriers in this ministry that are even able to go beyond what they normally do and just see a need and meet that need. I declare this season, as we build this relationship with you, that we're the need meeters in this, in this uh, ministry, Father. We thank you for Lifeline. And we thank you, Father, that you called us to build strong leaders for the kingdom of God. We declare that it's so in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. This week, I'm asking, I know sometimes, listen, we'll get back to our Bible studies on next Tuesday. We'll be back on Tuesday, the Tuesday after Labor Day. We'll be back this month. We've been pushing and promoting the Women's Conference, and we'll be back on next Tuesday. But don't forget, we still have things to maintain during the week. Amen. And so for those, God, well, put it on your heart just so. Remember, religion says I have to be in the building. But relationship says I know that that's my Bible study night. Yeah. Y'all hear me? Religion says I have to be in the building. Yeah. But relationship says that's my Bible study night. So I'm still going to sow on Tuesday. I'm still going to show up on Tuesday and I'll be here for prayer. So we need those midweek givers as well so that we can not only meet budgets, but we can exceed the budget. Will y'all help us to do that and be committed? How many of you are committed on Tuesdays, even when we're not in the building or in the virtual sanctuary? You say, I still have service and I'm going to be there. How many of you will commit to doing it? Thank you, family. I love you. Come on, let's rest on ourselves as we get ready to dismiss. Don't forget our women's conference. I love y'all t-shirts. I know Dr. Tiffany has to make a quick run for me, but I want to get a, a picture with all the ladies uh, on our t-shirts. We are super excited about the Heal the Little Girl Within Women's Conference. Oh, yes. Listen, if you've not gotten your ticket, even in the virtual sanctuary, please get your ticket. It's going to sell out. If you're in the building and haven't purchased it, get your ticket. It's going to sell out. It's going to be life-changing. My prayer is that it will be the biggest conference of 2023 in the world. Not because of where we are, but because of who we serve. And with God's glory, y'all didn't hear me, with God's glory, when His glory shows up, He brings everything that we need. So don't forget, Heal the little girl, share the flyer, invite your friends, invite your family. Ladies, come on up real quick before we dismiss. Come on up. Let's get a quick picture. I need somebody. I'll really use my camera because it'd be hard. To... Come on up. All the ladies that have their t-shirt. And uh, Prophet and Stillers will be at the table in the out there in the vestibule so that you can grab your ticket or get a couple of tickets for friends and family. Thank you, Justice. She's going to get it for us. But right before we do, I don't want to leave without... I know we prayed the prayer of salvation, but I want to pray. If you want to join Lifeline, come on, this is your opportunity now. You want to become a member of Lifeline Family Worship Center. I'm believing God that we have we are thousands strong. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, anybody believe God with me? Hallelujah, we are a thousand strong. That's my new model. Hashtag one thousand strong. That's what I believe God for, 1,000 strong. Yeah. We're not going back. Right. We're moving forward. Amen. And I'm so thankful for a prophet and Phyllis and Minister Ed, just all the small things they're doing behind the scenes. They were the ones that brought the fish. I told them, I said, I don't know if them fish, the real fish might survive in the summer because it'd be hot. So we might get some fake fish, but they brought the aquarium. Just little things. Come on, sell somebody. Yeah. Just a little thing. No, Dr. Brody came in here today for tables and you name, I mean, it's just a little thing. Listen, I love this lifeline. Amen. I love who we are. Amen. And I love where we are. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. This is a sweet place. God is doing something so sweet in this ministry. And I'm so thankful to God. So, do we, we're a thousand strong. Anybody want to join Lifeline? If you're praying over, no more pray over it. Hear God. He probably touching your heart saying, come on in there. You just got to pray over it, but come on, come on, yeah. pray over it, hear the Lord, and next Sunday, if you know that in seven days, God said, this is the place you ought to be, come on down here and join Lifeline, the greatest place on this side of heaven, because we're in the will of God, so it's the richest place on earth. Come on, somebody, yeah. let's thank God for the word of today, Amen. let's thank God for Dr. Darren Lee, that's yeah. Amen. and I thank God Woo. for you. I'm clapping for you because I see a win with your name on it. I'm clapping for you because I see victory all over your life. I'm clapping for you because I 
see the glory of God resting on your life. Somebody shout, Father, I thank you that I'm living in the richest place in the world. Father, as we leave Lifeline, but never your presence, may the angels of God encamp around about us, bring us back together again next Sunday to hear part two of this teaching message, the richest place in the world. Bring us back safely, God. Some of us are traveling in the airways or the roadways. Oh, God, some of us are going out of town work for our jobs. And God, protect and watch over our babies as they go in and out of the schools, Father. God, somebody else today needs a home. Provide that. Somebody needs a new job. Provide that. Somebody needs a raise and a bonus. Provide that, God. And Lord, bring us back with the testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, ladies, let's get a quick picture. Richard, Hallelujah, yes. I'd like to challenge the men of Lifeline yes. to sponsor at least one little girl, woman outside of Lifeline. Amen. I've done one, and I'm challenging every man to sponsor to come to the conference. All right, so outside of life, so Dr. Brody is challenging the men of Lifeline to purchase a, at least one ticket. Yes. Between next this Sunday and next Sunday, to purchase yes. one ticket to sponsor. You don't have to hold it. If you know somebody you want to give it to, you can. But we know somebody who definitely needs a ticket. And, and I'm praying. I don't want to release too much, but I'm praying because we're believing God that we'll be able to stream into a women's prison that was presented to me on last week. Amen. So we're working on how to maneuver and make that happen. And we've got to check, you know, the camera ministry and all that, what Faith Walk has accessible so that we can plug in. But that's what we're believing God, that we'll be able to stream to the women's prison. Amen. 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 Listen, we're taking, you know, it's a lot of heal the little girls in a lot of places. Some people can't walk physically into our building. So we're going to take the church straight to them. So we got to be in prayer. That's why we need intercessors on the wall. Listen, just because things don't look like they happen, let me tell you something. I'm making ball schools in places that people don't know. I just learned you can't release it from me. You got to work beside it and let them see the work. But you can rest it and assure yourself. That we're trying to get this conference to as many people as we can get this conference to. That it's not about money. Right. It's about obedience being in the will of God for this ministry. Amen. So how many men take up the challenge and say, Dr. Brody, I'll take up that challenge. All right. All right. They, they, all right. They all take it. Hey, hallelujah. Let's thank God for the little money.